There are so many cabinets in this kitchen that I am going to have to buy things to put in them. One cabinet that they did not include that I'm going to have to retrofit is for garbage. I have no idea why RVs are not designed with a pull-out drawer for garbage. Right now, mine is collecting in the corner where it shouldn't be. So I went to Lowe's and I got one of these pull-out cabinet drawers. However, they are made for household cabinets, not RV cabinets. So the idea, the vision, is to take this cabinet, which is just collecting plastic bags now, and then I've got to remove this and then bring up the floor so it's flush with this lip right here. And then in theory, if I measured correctly, I should be able to pull the garbage out this way. Not having a closed space for your garbage is not fun because then it sits out over here and this area really is supposed to be for adding some more countertop space. I've not actually used this because I have acreage of counter space as it is, but in the future, dear RV manufacturers, put a damn cabinet for the garbage. A lot of people have suggested underneath the sink down here. I'm not doing that because then you need a very short garbage can and I just don't like keeping garbage here when it's where I prefer to keep all my cleaning supplies. So I'm not doing that. Not a great solution. I'm not sure what the efficacy of this little thing is but it came with it. I think you're supposed to store spices there. The only spice I use is ketchup. <laughs> it goes on everything. Because this is silver, this has to go. You will probably hear me talk an awful lot about how much I hate silver. It's because when I was living in like Section 8 apartments and in skeezy other apartments all over the country, everything is silver. And I promised myself that when I could finally afford to not have to live in those places, I would never have anything silver in my home again. So it, it's like a mental, emotional thing with me. This is nice. It's, I mean, it has like a spray changer, which I do enjoy that, um, but it's silver, so it has to go. There's also, uh, this I think is called the farmer's sink. It's not technically a farmer's sink. I have seen a lot of RV owners say that their sink starts to rust. Um, pretty quickly. I have seen a couple spots here. Barkeeper's friend should take that right off. I will probably change out this sink at some point because it's silver. Um, but interesting discussion that Patreon Deb and I were having on our way back from Tampa. She has seen some people fill their sink to soak dishes. And I'm not saying like, you know, up to the top, but like halfway to soak dishes and their sink crashes through the countertop because they're not rated to hold that much weight. Um, that, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, that's what, that's the point of a sink, right? To be able to soak your, di whatever. Anyway, just be careful how much weight you are putting on this. And then also know that these kind of lower end, very light um, silver alumini sinks, they scratch really, really, really easily. So you need to put in some kind of bottom grate or I have this plastic um, sink liner so that your silver and your pots and all that, when they're touching the bottom, that they don't scratch up the bottom of your sink. It will not affect your sink's ability to hold water, but it does, it kind of tears it up pretty damn quickly. And then, Ladies, I know you hear me on this. This is the best smelling soap in the world. It, it, it's, it's amazing. Again, I'll put links to all this stuff, but <laughs> if you need to have beautiful lavender smelling hands after doing dishes, I used to think that it was ridiculous how much people paid for this, and then I smelled it. <laughs> and now I own too much of it. I mentioned lining your cabinets, and I wanted to show you two different options for two different budgets. All right, this is the heavier duty printed kind of frou-frou, but much more stable version at Walmart. And I think it's like $6 a roll and it doesn't get you very far. This I use for any cabinet that's holding my gear because the gear absolutely cannot skid around. But over in the fabric section of Walmart, you will see very large spools 
of this sort of plasticky material. This is for table, um, picnic tabletops. So this is transparent, it has a little design on it, and then all my kitchen cabinets I lined with this because if any jar leaks or there's food that gets on anything, this is very easy to wipe off and is not gonna, I'm not gonna have to like scrape it off the bottom of the cabinet and it will kind of buffer any noise if things are rattling around. But this, this I pay extra for because it's important to protect the gear. Besides the tea set, the fireplace may be my next favorite thing ever in here. It's not that I've never seen these in a rig. I just couldn't figure out why they were so popular. And now that I have one, I understand why. This is electric, not propane. There are some big pluses and minuses with that. I'm not blowing through my propane tanks, which is great, but I can only use it if I'm plugged in. Not so great. But if you turn it on, just on, it's only light. And then the temperature button, I can start at 99 degrees and go all the way down to about 72, I think. Yeah, 71. This baby will heat this entire rig without me having to turn on the heat. And it's just so nice. You know, part of the thing that I was saying about the day bed, I love, this is like my queen's <laughs> just uh, thrown over here at night because I've got all my blankets and I can curl up there and watch a movie and then I've got this nice warm fire like I I cannot tell you how much I love being in here I absolutely love this as my new home it's wonderful and this is such a treat it's it's so um, not only just because that it warms everything but it's just a nice thing to have it really it's it's special. I just think it's really special and I'm really glad I have it. This is one of those little features that you don't think will be important until you actually have it. When I was looking at rigs that were, let's say, 2011 and 2012s, and I thought, I'm going to save all this money because it's going to be older. And what I will say in having a much newer rig is that it comes with features that accommodate all of our tech. And that means USB ports and LED lighting and all those things that we didn't really have in the older rigs. But just for example, so underneath, you know, when I first walked in here and I'm looking around the kitchen walls, I'm like, how are there no plugs in here? It's because the plugs are underneath the cabinets, which is really nice. Cause then you don't, I mean, it's just not that pretty to have plugs out here. But the plugs also all have, all throughout the rig, USB ports. And that is awesome because most of our stuff now charges on USB ports. Okay, and now the new desk area solution. This may not be the final resting place of the desk, but I do think it makes the most sense given what I'm up against with all the construction in there. All right, now in rigs, they have all this extra seating because as though I don't have enough area to sit in here, we have a whole nother couch here that I don't use except to throw stuff on. And this really ill-placed mirror that does absolutely nothing except allow you to look at your behind in a variety of different angles. It's worthless. The thought now is to put the desk over here because the length is about six feet by 34, so you can totally accommodate a desk. Now, when this slide is in, it comes to about here, so you will not be able to access the desk when the slide is in. However, you can't access that entire bunkhouse when the slide is in. So. In this way, what would happen is the monitors would go back on this wall, or if I attach them here, I'd have this, this is worthless to me. I don't have anything to put up there. I don't have like my grandmother's china that I need storage for. So the thought is to put the desk out here and the monitors there and all my storage up there and then keep this back bunkhouse for all my gear and all the like clunky stuff that's gonna get in my way. Now the nice thing about this approach is that I can enjoy the fireplace. I've got all these windows. I'm close to my tea. So it's kind of like a nice area to work in. The only downside is that there's no more separation of like workspace 
and chill space, which I was really hoping to accomplish. But because there's no construction involved with this, this couch is going to come out anyway. I don't need it. It's going to go in storage when I sell the rig or if I suddenly decide I need another couch, I can put it back in. The couch here, now I've I got plenty of feedback that people are like, oh, the couch is great. Leave the couch, leave the couch. I have no use for this couch. I get rid of anything that becomes a place to collect things. And this couch, that's all it does, is I walk through the door and I throw stuff on it and I don't want to get in the habit of that. The other reason the couch needs to go, and this is just kind of poor design, but down behind the couch, this is the, um, the fuse panel and that's fine, but on the other end is the intake for the furnace. And you really don't want anything solid blocking the intake to your furnace because it will restrict airflow and that is never ideal. The first big, big project that I have in here is to paint these walls. These are generic RV brown walls because RV manufacturers have never been told that there are colors other than light brown. So this is like that texture, uh, there's a special kind of paint that I have to get to prime this whole wall. And then I'm gonna paint it some like off-white ivory color, leaving the dark cabinets as is for right now. My only real worry with that is that the ceiling is kind of a light grayish brown and that I think I'm gonna end up having to paint the whole God bless it thing. But I just, I don't like this. This pisses me off. And then back here again, these hard valances, like this has gotta go, and like some real curtains and probably lined thermal curtains because these windows are drafty as all get out. At the front door, one of the first things that I'm doing here is to change out this lock. For whatever reason, RV manufacturers design the locks to be pretty much interchangeable, and chances are my RV key will work on another person's RV. And sometimes you'll see people comment on Facebook groups that say, oh, we were locked out of our RV, but our next door neighbors came and just used their key and opened it up. Oh, thank goodness for them. And I'm like, oh, larceny, uh huh? That's not good. So I gotta change that out. And then this, and yes, I will put a link to all this stuff, and I know you sickos are gonna want one of these. So I got a special mat, just kind of in honor of the people who have the free will to choose from any YouTube video, and there are millions and millions of them, but choose mine, watch the whole thing in its entirety, and then complain about it in the comment section. And for those people, I was just feeling really inspired this Christmas season, so I found a special kind of doormat just for them. <laughs> I think it goes really well with my Swiffer slippers. Quick moment for a very special thank you. I told you that all my clothes were destroyed and I've been freezing my ass off because it was like the last of my winter clothes. My friend Gina, I've not taken the label off. She upgraded me as a Christmas present to these amazing lined boots and I feel like, a print. you know where these are gonna come in handy? At the Tiny Teens Tiny Teats Campground Farm, which we are gonna start shopping for this week. Gina, love you, thank you for those. Okay, let's go upstairs. Before we do panel talk, right here is the main panel with all the things, and the only thing that I will point out here that I paid extra for and have no regrets on is the tank heaters. So it is just a flip of a button where if it gets below 32 degrees, there's a heating element in my tanks that will come on and keep them from freezing. And that I think is worth all the money in the world. Upstairs in the second floor, the first place we will enter is the potty. This is cool because this is a walkthrough bathroom and I didn't think that would be a very big deal as far as features go until I actually had it. I added over these doors all kinds of over door storage and I would stick with this because these walls hollow. You don't want to put anything that's going to be holding a whole lot of weight on these walls. So all this has to get painted as well and then I'm going to change out the towel holders here because they are silver. 
this has got to go. I don't know how I'm going to fix this, but you know I hate fairy sinks, those stupid tiny little sinks so much. This is not only a fairy sink, but a silver fairy sink. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> uh, I've got to get some little containers or baskets for over here. I was hoping these would work, but they don't really fit. And then I would say there is more than ample storage underneath here but this is not a solid well it's solid but it's not as nice as the countertop in the kitchen so I'll probably change this at some point most of all this just needs to get painted uh, now in one of the videos some of you noticed that you thought that my rig was haunted because the lights were turning on and off in the background the light in the bathroom one of the lights in the bathroom and the light in the hallway are motion sensor lights and these are great because you don't have to fumble around for the light switch when it's late at night and you have to tinkle you just enter and this will switch on and then switch right off whenever you get back into bed in this 28 bh it has a real toilet a porcelain throne that's not a big deal to me but a lot of other people seem to think that sitting on anything other than porcelain is not for them i am of the camp of the no toilet paper down the toilet for rvs I have not installed the toilet paper holder. It's in here somewhere, but I do not put the toilet paper down the toilet. It goes into a garbage bag on the side. And I know that there are plenty of people that think that that's gross and don't wanna do that. And all I would say is I would encourage you to read some of the stories of people who have a clogged black tank because all that toilet paper and all your nasty will congeal and harden. <laughs> and plug up the black tank and then you can't drain it. And then you have a really disgusting problem. I think that putting it in a, in a plastic bag, just the paper is way less nasty than having to unclog a black tank. Also, a lot of European countries just do that anyway because they don't have our heavy duty plumbing systems like we have in the US. It's not that big of a deal and it makes draining the black tank really uneventful. Uh, the shower, I've not used the shower yet. I have this big ass shower. The shower was the limiting agent in the van. I noticed that I was starting to pick places where I would go based on my access to a gym. I probably won't use this a whole lot because I do take all my showers at the gym, but it's pretty damn big and right now it really only gets used for laundry storage and then mop and broom and everything else. But. If I want to go far off and not choose destinations based on the gym, I can now do that. And that's pretty cool. Again, I have another one of these foam plugs to keep the heat from running out of the fan. Okay, this, this is where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean any amount of sleep over three hours. If I get more than three hours of sleep a night, it is magical. There's another one of these weird sliding doors here that I don't ever use, but this is where the second slide is. So this back here is another slide. When it comes in, I can get to most of the cabinets, but not all of them. Queen size bed. This, oh my gosh, I can actually stretch out and like, and this is all mine. Oh, I'm so happy. All right, if you use your lady muscles, there is ample storage underneath the bed for whatever you need to put under there. And the mattress that came with this, so people complain an awful lot about their RV mattress, and I will say that they do truly suck. So what I did is underneath here, I still have the plastic on the RV mattress. I've like not committed to it. It, it really was horrible. It's like, it's hard as a rock. And the option was to either try to sell that and then get a different mattress altogether, or what I ended up doing is instead of paying 200 plus dollars, the best mattress in the whole universe only costs $200. It's on Amazon. I've talked about it before. I could have done that. I just didn't really want to deal with it at all. So instead, I spent like 90 bucks and got this three inch mattress pad. It's a memory foam mattress pad. Put that on top of the other mattress kept the plastic on the original mattress in case I do sell it eventually. And I have to tell you, it's like, it's the greatest sleep that ever was. So if you don't want to get a whole new mattress and spend all that money, then just get the topper. I'll put a link to the one I got. 
And then this I've got to tell you about because I thought these were a joke and they're not. Allison had told me about weighted blankets and because of all the stress and sleep deprivation that I went through while living in the car, I had like this <laughs> recovery period and it was really important that I started getting regular sleep. So Allison told me about weighted blankets and it, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's filled with these beads and it's 15 pounds, the whole thing. And it's kind of, it takes a little bit to get used to, but this blanket has like completely changed how I sleep and I actually get a full night's sleep. It's sort of like swaddling for adults. <laughs> it just like compresses you just enough so that it's, it's very comforting to have like a little bit of weight on you. And then because you have a little bit of weight on you, you don't toss and turn. On a normal night, when I wake up, I'm like down here, upside down, with the pillows everywhere and like the blankets twist around my head. I don't know what goes on while I'm asleep, but it's probably indicative of like getting my stress out, <laughs> like subconsciously. So the weighted blanket is just enough weight to where whatever position I am last conscious in is the same one I wake up in, which means I'm not waking myself up throughout the night by tossing and turning. And I'm a hot sleeper and I've not had any problem with this. The only thing I would have done differently on the weighted blanket is I'll, I'll put a link to this one, but also they have some that have like boxes, if that makes sense. And so the, the beads, the weights are like held in place so they don't shift too much. And that is a little bit more expensive, but I kind of wish that I had paid to get that. So this is amazing. This bed is amazing. Every night when I lay in this, I just, I'm like, oh, I'm so grateful and so thankful to have all of this every morning when I wake up. I think it's just wonderful. Everything is wonderful. Love it, love it, love it. Love it! These cheap little light fixtures, those have got to go. There is a second air conditioner in here uh, for that. If you're going to run two, you do need 50 amps of power. Right now it's so damn cold out that I don't think that will be an issue. Again, the nice thing about having a newer rig is I have USB ports in here so I can charge my phone, which is also my alarm clock. And then this little beauty, which I missed an awful lot on the road. <sighs> White noise machine. So when I turn this on and I've got three inches of memory foam mattress and like all my pillows and a weighted blanket, I am like princess in the like oh I just love it I think it's great again more over the door storage here this has got to get painted <laughs> I don't know who thought that this color of a wall would be a good idea in here but this is gonna get painted I've got to replace all my bedding because it's totally ratty from being thrown in cheap laundromats all over the country and then some real curtains in here and it's gonna be very baby. It's gonna be very babe cavey. This will be a special bedroom. All right, I think that's pretty much it, everybody. Coming back here, going back downstairs. I think we've kind of covered everything. Oh, we've gotta go see Bob. I haven't introduced you to Bob yet. I'm gonna save Bob for a different video and that's because there's an awful lot that we have to talk about on picking a truck that will pull a fifth wheel I learn all sorts of things about the correct answer or the correct answer for you based on listening to other people bicker. <laughs> so we'll get to that. I have to get to the paint store before it closes because I've got to paint this whole God blessed thing to make it a little bit more war wagon, babe cave e. So we got a lot to do. So we're going to talk about the truck. I'm going to show you this new vlogging setup, which I think think the world of. It's awesome. I'll put all the links again to stuff that I mentioned around here below. And then we've also got to do a video on everything that I wish I had known about buying an RV before I even started buying an RV. It's the video that I wish I had watched and learned from before I even stepped foot in an RV lot. So I've taken all my advice and then I asked everyone on Patreon to please give me their suggestions. So we've got a wealth of information. Thank you everyone who signed up for Patreon to keep this thing going. We did had that whole conversation recently. It's because of them and the PayPal people that this train keeps moving or this war wagon keeps moving. So we got a lot ahead of us and a documentary. Mm. 
not enough time in the world. And then soon, once I confirm where our big trip is, I want to make sure they're still okay with it. We got somewhere, somewhere big, 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 <laughs> that we need to be in February. This week, also shopping for farmland. Got a lot to do. Got to get to the paint store. Bye, weirdos.